There's a proper way to do that, by the way. Three fingers together, representing the Trinity. Two fingers, not representing rabbit ears, or the peace sign, but Jesus' two natures of human and divine, held in one hand before you. Been that way since the Council of Nicaea. Just, just so you know, we're not just going, peace, y'all. <laughs> well, I had a Saturday off yesterday. It was weird. Thank you for not dying yesterday. <laughs> no pastor had a funeral yesterday. Now, we're doing Sam DeGeneres uh, service today right after church, and we all miss Sam. And Boy, I had tears in my eyes reading those names, so many of them, just such dear and close friends. But yesterday, I did something I haven't been able to do in a long time. I got a lot of yard work done, had a Saturday off, put new salt in the water softener, scrubbed down the pool, scrubbed down the pool deck. I... Um, just had a great day, and at 3.30, I watched the Gator Georgia game. Yeah. The Bulldogs ate the Gators. They just chomped them. They just, they just ate them. My, you know, so I'm saying to God, okay, God, I'm talking about you coming and rescuing us tomorrow. And my Gators are getting chomped right here. And God answers by letting them continue to be chomped the entire. <laughs> Watching it with Sharon, who never watches football. I hardly ever watch football because I don't have Saturdays, because Saturdays are weddings and funerals. I'm sitting there wondering if it's the best use of a Saturday, but I enjoyed it. But it did, it did kind of rattle against this scripture. This one right here. On that day, the Lord their God will save them. <laughs> Unless you're from University of Florida. And they are the flock of his people, unless they're orange and blue. For like the jewels of a crown, they shall shine on his land. For what goodness and beauty are his. Grain shall make the young men flourish, and new wine the young women. On that day, the Lord their God will come and save them. We talk a lot about hurricanes in Florida. There was this guy in a flood zone. If you're in a flood zone, you should evacuate. Y'all know that, don't you? If you're in a flood zone and they say evacuate, you should do that. So the flood waters were rising in the street and a big truck with high wheels came along to save him. And he said, um, the Lord my God will come and save me says it in God's word. And the truck went, okay, Just went on by. Water rose up over the porch, and as the water rose up over the porch, see Dave, I was listening to your prayer. John Boat comes by and says, um, you really need to get in. We've sent this to save you. And, and he goes, Lord thy God, on that day we'll save thee. So the John Boat guy goes, okay goes on, the waters rise there to his rooftop. He cuts a hole in his attic. By the way, if you're going to stay and the waters rise to your ceiling, have attic access and then something to get through the roof. But you know how you don't have to do that? Don't stay. That's how you don't have to do that. But anyway, back to the story. So he chops a hole in his roof, he's sitting on the top of his roof, a helicopter comes by and says, we're here to save you. And he goes, on that day, the Lord thy God will come and save thee. So helicopter goes, okay, goes on away, the ladder trails the helicopter away, the waters rise, the man dies. Man goes to heaven because there are a lot of stupid people in heaven. God does not hold stupid against us. Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. For if God held stupid against us, who would rise? So he goes sloppy walking all the way into the throne of grace, getting water all over God's, I'm sure, very nice floor. He looks up. He says, 
The scripture says he's talking to Jesus, who, by the way, will be our advocate on that day. He says, the scripture says, my God will come and save me. The guy says, A, get a mop and clean this stuff up. B, you have time because your room's not ready. (laughs) Because C, I sent a truck, I sent a John boat, and I sent a helicopter. (laughs) On that day, the Lord thy God will come and save thee is an amazing scripture, isn't it? I want to start Thanksgiving with that faith statement. Now, it doesn't fly in the face of your football team winning or losing, and it may not fly in the way that you want to be saved. I'm sure the guy wanted his whole house saved and his documents saved and all his nice furniture saved and his drywall saved. But it's a powerful, as we start the Thanksgiving month, it's a powerful thing to hear on that day, the Lord thy God will come and save thee. I know I'm saying in in 1611 King James English, but some scriptures you memorize like they are. You know, John 3, 16, 20, 20, 20, that psalm that you know so well. On that day, the Lord thy God will come and save thee is an amazing, thankful thing. Because at its worst, we can hold on to, I know my God. I know my God. And my God will come and save me. This is where Christians say, I'm blessed in the best and worst of circumstances. Why am I blessed? Because the Lord my God will come and save me. Because God will make a way where there is no way. God will open a path that I do not see. If a door closes, God will open a window because my God is an awesome God. Thanksgiving, I want, I want to spend a month, not a day on Thanksgiving. I would love for our hearts to know that we are blessed. So another story. You're on a ship and it sinks. You're in the water. There's a life raft about 400 yards drifting away. What's your prayer? (laughs) Somehow, somehow, God, get me in that life raft together. I want on that life raft, all right? So you get to the life raft. End of story, right? Wrong. Because we aren't just blessed. What, Jack? Blessed to be a blessing, thanksgiving, God has come to save us. Isn't that what you're preaching out? Your God will come and save you. Associated with this concept is another concept, and it's all through Scripture. We are blessed, our God will come and save us, but we are blessed to what? You get in the life raft, you catch your breath, then what do Christians do? Get up, look around, get a paddle, and steer for shore, right? Wrong, we're blessed to be a blessing. So what do we do? We'll look for somebody who was just like us a minute ago. Just like us a minute ago. You don't have to be 10 years down the road to reach out a hand to somebody. You don't have to be way better. You just have to be 10 seconds better. You just have to be, I'm in the lifeboat now. I wasn't before, but I am now. And because I am now, I can stick this paddle out and pull you over to the boat. Now, I want you to be careful with struggling people. This comes from lifeguard training, y'all. I took lifeguard training when I was 17 years old. And then I went up to Montana for a summer to meet my father. Um, 
they don't swim in Montana. I think they have an 18-day swimming season. It's from the 1st of August to about August 18th. If the water, you can chip right through it. You can get down in it. Well, I went up to Montana. Nobody swam in Montana. So I'm a lifeguard. I'm a lifeguard amongst non-swimmers. This little kid goes down to the drain. They did not have a screen over the drain. They just had a hole about that big around. <laughs> this kid goes down and sits on it. Thump. Now the kid's looking. What have I done? I am a recent lifeguard, but I'm recent enough to what? Save stupid. I go down, I get, I know it's a gross story, I get my hands, you got to get break the seal, you know, as so I get my hands in there, the kid goes up, you can't make this stuff up again, half an hour later, you know, the, you know what I'm going to say, don't you, half an hour later, the seventh grade kid, seventh grade, you're in puberty by then. God's starting to make a whole forebrain happen. You've got, you've got two-thirds of your brain developed. Thunk. <laughs> now let me ask you this. If you have saved a person once and they're stupid, can you just be blessed and relax and watch the football game? It's a fair question. What does Jesus say? Let's say someone's stupid with you and you got to love them. He says seven times, right? No, he doesn't. Seven times 70. I imagine that guy's butt would be rather raw. It only took him twice, but I swear that 99% of the world, I think it would have took them once. Wiggle the finger, pull it up again. We are blessed and we are thankful. And from that risen place, we cannot afford judgmentalism. Those in the lifeboat are not better than those in the water. They might be faster swimmers. They may be better planners. But those in the water are as worthy as those in the boat. And so we are blessed to be a blessing. On that day, thy God, the Lord thy God, will come and save you. And then God will set you up to be what? Able to look around and see who needs saving. This is the blessed life. It is the life where we have faith that if we go down, we can get up because our God will be there for us. And once up, we're blessed to be a blessing. I hope... I hope Thanksgiving month, I hope November is this for you, that you love the fact that your life is blessed. Walk into the morning saying, I'm blessed. When people ask you are, say, I'm blessed. I am blessed. Now, I got to tell you, I, I get it. My little finger doesn't close anymore. It almost does. I know I can get surgery for it, but I don't want to. I've had enough, by my age, I've had enough surgery. I got four inches of titanium in my neck that is a better barometer than channel nine. <laughs> if channel nine tells you when it's going to rain, ask me. Four inches of titanium does not lie. I got two knees that are bad from praying, of course. I have worn my knees out. <laughs> praying. My feet hurt. My heels hurt. One of my heels needs surgery. The other one is catching up to it. I could focus on these things, couldn't you? 
Don't you have that many and more? Don't you have that many things to focus on that proves that you're not blessed, that you're in pain, that your life stinks, and that you should get up angry at God for the lot that God has given you? My friends, that path of focusing on your pain and your problems leads to insanity. It's hysteria. It's craziness. To wake up in the morning with all your aches and pains and problems and disappointments and fears and loss and to have victory to say, my God, my Lord will come and save me. I'm blessed. Let's go, God. Let's live this day. And maybe I can find somebody I'll pull out of the water today and that'll just put icing on my cake today. Let's spend November like that. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to Holy Communion to begin the Thanksgiving time, Lord, could we just have on our lips, I'm blessed. And hear that scripture, for the Lord thy God on that day will come and save you. Lord, may we be blessed to be a blessing and love our life as is. Let this holy communion drink and feed down into our soul the blessed to be a blessing thankfulness and the confidence of your salvation. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jeremy? Final thought for you this morning. On that day, the Lord thy God will come and save you. You have the choice, really, as to what that day is, because... The guy walking sloppy into Jesus could have stopped at the helicopter. Or he could have stopped at the John boat. Or he could have accepted being saved at the high wheel truck. He didn't have to chop a hole in his roof. And when they said evacuate, he could have considered that being saved. I have another sermon on catch sin early. It's called The Road to Thanona Sassa. <laughs> I'll preach it again before I retire. It, it basically says when you find yourself headed towards stupid, let that be the day the Lord comes and saves you. You can choose the day. <laughs>